Hello again, this is Brad Wood. Today we're going to be talking about another topic I get questioned fairly often on, and that is how to run a command box website behind an IIS web server. Now, command box has a built-in web server that's uh, Java-based. It's very lightweight and fast and supports a lot of features that IIS and Apache do, but there is still some good reasons to run a site behind IIS, especially if you're doing a production site and you want to have your JavaScript images, PDFs served by the web server. Also, if your company depends on some IIS uh, specific features like cat card authentication and things like that. So this is not too hard to do, and we're going to be using the bond code connector. Uh, ignore the fact that it says Apache everywhere. Um, it's actually nothing specific to Apache in this. Uh, this will connect to any servlet engine running the AJP uh, protocol. And of course, command box falls in this category. So first of all, let's get our command box site up and running. This can be any command box site with any settings, uh, Adobe Cold Fusion, Lucy, doesn't matter. We're just going to keep it simple today. Let's go ahead and make a directory, call this IIS site one. And then let's echo out site one. And then just to prove that we're running Cold Fusion output. All right, let's throw this into an index.cfm file here in our folder. Now there's a couple things we want to set. The first of which is server set web dot ajp dot enable. Let's set this equal to true. This will enable that AJP connector. And just for explicitness, even though it's the default, we're going to set the port to 8009. Okay. So there's there's the settings right there that we've set, and we only have two files right now in our web root, index.cfm and server.json. I'm gonna leave everything else as defaults, so and I'm just gonna go ahead and start up this website. Okay, so site one has started and we're outputting the current time. Now, it's important to note, even though I enabled the AJP listener, we're still by default the HTTP listener, which is on port, what, 52,712. You can change this port, you can turn off the HTTP listener. I like to still have it on just for testing so I can hit command box directly and debug it. So meanwhile, if we just hit IAS on port 80, uh, we're getting this. This is the default uh, web route for the IAS default website. This is located, um, let's just open up IIS right here. If we go in here and manage the website under advanced settings, we can see that the default website is just pointed to root. First thing we want to do is we need to repoint IIS to the same web root that the command box web server is pointing to. Let's go ahead and grab that, c colon sandbox IIS site one. And we're going to override the web root in IIS. Okay, now it's not going to work, but let's go ahead and just work through the errors as we go. So, first of all, there's no index files in this folder that IIS knows about, so it's just yelling at us saying it can't list the contents of the directory. That's fine, don't worry about that. It's time to go ahead and get bond code set up now so that IIS knows to serve that index.cfm file. Bond code has a plethora of docs here on the website, everything you could ever want to know about bond code, and these are all included in the download. So you'll find the download link of the website points to GitHub under releases. You can just grab this zip file. Um, it's about five megs, not a great deal in there. In fact, most of that's the PDF file with the docs. And I have that downloaded right here on my hard drive, AJP 1.3. Inside of here is a bunch of files. This PDF here has all those docs in it. The one we care about is connector underscore setup.exe. So we're gonna go ahead and run this connector setup. So it's not uh, too hard to get through. You can automate this entire wizard and script it so it installs headlessly. Pretty easy to do. I've done it, but we're just going to do a manual installation. All right, accept that. Next, uh, default localhost 8009. We're good there. Go ahead and disable that. All right, I don't know what all these do, but I always check that one because it seems like a good idea. All right, this is important. This is the one setting you don't want to mess up. Uh, similar to a traditional Cold Fusion or Lucy installation, you have the ability to connect IIS to all the IIS sites to that single instance, or you can say, I want to have each IIS site point to a separate um, Cold Fusion engine. And we want to do the second one. This is important. Unlike your traditional Cold Fusion installs, a single command box server has a single web root, right? So we can't just have multiple web routes and multiple IIS sites pointing at the same command box instance. We want to do it on a per site basis. So if you want to have two sites in IIS, we'll just have two command box servers running. They're fast and lightweight, so that's not a problem. But make sure you do this. If you do accidentally install it with the first option checked, according to the docs, you do need to uninstall bond code first. 
come back to the install and do the second option. I've actually done it the first time I tried this. It's not too hard. Okay, so we're going to say tie this up to the default website. We don't need to run JSPs, but we do need cold fusion files. And I always check that because it seems like a good idea. Not entirely sure what it does though. And we're done. The installation is fairly painless. So there's a few things that did, and let's take a quick look at them. Let's open up our web root. Okay, two things have been added here. The first is web.config. This is an IIS configuration file. And we see this has those handler mappings in here for CFC and CFM files. It also has a default document of index.cfm. Uh, and this happens because we set it up on a per site basis. If you do the global install, this will all get written globally. There's also a bin folder. Inside that bin folder, these are the DLLs that bond code uses. Uh, this text file you can delete. Uh, it's just a little in uninstallation uh, help. There's also a settings file uh, that we'll use here in a little bit. This has our port, that AJP port 8009. gets stored here in the settings file. So to view the exact same thing from um, IIS, if we look under default document, we'll see index.cfm is added there. That came from the web config. If we look under handler mappings, this is also was in that web.config.cfc.cfm are now handled by IIS. So let's see where we're at now. If we hit IIS on port 80. Oh, there we go. Okay, so we're hitting IIS on port 80, which is using the bond code connector to handle the default document of index.cfm, proxying it through to our command box server, um, the AJP listener on port 8009, and then it's running our cold fusion code. Really pretty straightforward. So it was a fairly common scenario, which is using virtual directories. Um, and I want to run over that because uh, it, it takes a couple more steps you're probably not used to. Let's set up in our site. Um, sorry for the contrived example. Sorry, not sorry. Let's create a folder called bar. And we're going to throw, uh, let's just throw an index.cfm in here. Just give us something to hit. Come on, index.cfm. Okay, and we're just going to say um, site one's uh, bar folder. Want to make sure that we know we're hitting it. Okay, um, let's also create just a, a text file in here as well. Test.txt, because I want to show the difference between cold fusion files and non cold fusion files. Uh, the text file represents the static assets in your site images, JavaScript, CSS, PDFs. Okay, so I'll grab the path to this, put it on my clipboard. We're gonna go ahead and create a virtual directory in IIS, and we're gonna call this virtual directory slash foo, right? And we're gonna point it to that bar folder. So now, if we come in and we hit slash foo, and we hit that test.txt file. Oh, I didn't put anything in there, did I? Whee! Okay test.txt has content. Here we go. We can hit our text file directly without any other additional configuration. All we need is the virtual directory in IIS, and that's enough to map through to static assets like text files, JavaScript, things like that, right? That's not a problem. But if we want to hit um, a file like index.cfm, it's not going to work. There's some missing pieces in place to get cold fusion files to flow all the way through. You can see IIS is handing it off to my cold fusion engine, which is Lucy in this instance, um, but Lucy's not quite sure what to do with it. So there's two pieces that have to happen. The first of which is we need to set an alias in command box. So command box also knows about that foo virtual directory. We're going to do server set web dot aliases dot slash foo equals bar. All right, so if we take a look at that, we created an aliases object and the name of the virtual directory is foo and the relative path it points to is bar. All right, easy peasy. So we're going to restart uh, our Lucy server real quick so that that um, alias will take effect. Okay, Lucy's back up. And now we're going to go for this last step into the administrator for our server. If you're using Adobe Cold Fusion, no worries. Just uh, do the exact same steps you would do to make this happen on Adobe. Okay, so we're going to go to mappings. And we're going to also add this foo mapping in here. And... Let's grab this path of my clipboard here. Okay, so we need we need command box to know about foo, and we need Lucy to know about foo. Okay, 
Now that we put those additional pieces in place, we can come back to IIS, we can hit our virtual directory, and now we can serve cold fusion files from the virtual directory. But you have to have all three places having knowledge of this slash foo, right? So the IIS virtual directory, the command box alias, and the cold fusion mapping in Lucy. Uh, I haven't tested this fully, but I, in some limited testing, I have found that an application at CFC mapping doesn't always seem to work here. Uh, it likes to be in the server, so you can always use cfconfig to help automate that. Okay, so this is pretty straightforward and it works and is fun to play with. Let's set up a second site just so we can see this in action with two sites. So I'm going to back up out of this directory and I'm going to uh, make IIS site 2. And let's come back over here to my echo statement. We're going to echo site 2 and we're going to index.cfm in this one. And then we're going to set um, AJP to be enabled. And we're going to set the port now. Let's do 8010. So let's increment it by one. So this is important. We have two command box servers, each with AJP enabled. And one of them is on port 8009. One of them is on port 8010. They need to be on separate ports. All right, let's go ahead and prep the, uh, the web root. We want to grab the bin folder. We want to grab that web config. We could go back through the installer um, for bond code. Here we go. Our command box servers up site two, hitting it on HTTP. We could go back through the installer and we could rerun it. Um, we could put it a different port and we could choose our, our new IIS site. But you can also just do it manually like this. So let's just navigate over to IIS site two. We're going to dump the same bin folder, the same web config, so the same map mappings are going to exist. And we're going to go into our bin folder and we're going to edit the settings and we're going to say this guy is on port 8010. So the port that's in our bond code settings file matches the port that's in command box. All right, grab the web root to our clipboard and let's go over and let's tell IIS about this site. So we're going to say, give us a new website. We're going to call this one site2. Physical path points to our web root. Let's put this on port 81 just to make it kind of easy and straightforward. Okay, so there's our, our site2. So let's come over here, localhost, hitting IIS on port 81. And now you can see we're hitting site2 in the background. Now there's a nice little trick here that I really like. This is a built-in feature of bond code that you can only activate when you're hitting it on the local machine. Close some of these extra tabs here. So when I'm hitting site one, we can add this. This is in the docs, by the way. Question mark, bond code connector version equals true. This will enable some special debugging output um, in your website, and you can actually confirm the version of bond code, and it'll tell you when we hit localhost 80, which is site one, it'll show you we're actually hitting sandbox IS site one bin and here's the settings file so you can confirm the actual settings file in use this is great if you get the ports mixed up and you're a little confused about which site's hitting what come over and do the same thing on the second site and you can see the debugging information shows us we're in sandbox IIS site 2 All right so this is a great little handy trick to uh to get some debugging information out of the bond code connector and make sure that the correct IIS site is passing through to the correct command box site so I think you have all of the information you need now. At this point, you can create as many sites as you want, and you just spin up a, a command box server for each one of them in the background. Uh, you pick a separate AJP port. And if you're looking to do this for uh, staging your production server, I also have a screencast I just released on how to run your command box servers as Windows services so they start automatically when your server comes up. Okay, guys, a little bit longer screencast today, but I had a lot to cover, so... Hopefully that gives you some pointers, and there's a lot of pitfalls here. Uh, well, I don't want to say pitfalls. <clears throat> there's a lot of things you can get wrong. <laughs> um, so feel free to ask questions if you're hitting some errors. It's probably just something simple that you've missed, like a settings file or a port mismatch. And other than that, give it a try, and everybody have a great day.